Hey guys, um, <coughs> this page is part of a color along event in, uh, just coloring. It's a Johanna Bashford coloring group. Anyway, it kind of gave me an idea, uh, to show you guys a little tip that can help minimize, uh, bleed through when you're using wet media on these pic type pictures because the paper is good like I mean it's good paper it's it's decent but it you know if you're not careful it can bleed through and I'll show you an example oh, I'm gonna move this for a second sorry for the paint um, so this is a picture I'm working on from Kirby Roseanne's new book uh, mythic world and I, I honestly don't remember what legend this is but I just normally I don't do which is per se it's you know not really my thing but I love this image it's so creepy <laughs> and anyway I want I knew I wanted to do the background in ink tents because in the trees to just kind of settle them in so that when I go over them with anything else they kind of stay put unless of course you don't completely activate the ink tents and yeah then then you might have a mess that has happened to me so anyway back to this one of the things you can do to help minimize this is this or this sort of thing happening. Flip this over. You see what happened there? Now I'm not too worried because I can cover that up easily. It's not a it's not a big deal. But the reason and it happened once over here. And the reason why it happened in these spots is because I did not get it covered with and this is part of a this is one half of a double page. Um river snake or something like that's an amazing image anyway the reason why that happened and that happened was because I did not get I did not cover it completely with this and I missed a spot so and that's frustrating because I used a sponge and everything you know you know one of those little spongy things and I still ended up missing a spot now all the other areas, except for, and there's where I missed also, you see nothing. There's absolutely no bleed through whatsoever. And I did that. All of that with ink, ink tents. And the only spot it bled through was where I missed. So, yeah. So one of the tips that I'm going to give you for this is to don't miss because <laughs> then you're going to end up with what I just showed you. Now, one of the things that I'm going to try that's different than normal, and because this is a busy image, I'm going to try use using paint brushes instead. And these are just like, well, this one is part of a set that came from Five Below. Um, and these are just I don't know, like Artist Loft from Michaels. So I thought I'd try this instead um, to see if it worked better for me than than the sponges did. And because I need to go around a lot of things, because I don't plan on doing the um, image itself with any uh, a whole lot of wet media, just the background. I have a kind of an idea for like an ocean kind of thing with maybe a little beach. I've seen it before, but you know, I've got some new watercolors that are all blue themed, like ocean themed. I thought, oh, this would be the perfect image to try that out on. So, without further ado, uh, and I'm not taping it down because obviously um, I'm not sure how much tape I'm going to put on. So, normally I would tape that down, but, <coughs> excuse me, that's why I'm not going to. So... Normally, I use. Oh, I'll pull it out. This sort of thing. That's what I used for that. I I lay. I put it down like this uh, before everything was, you know, colored up. Um, 
and I still ended up missing a couple spots. It's it's good that because like even though I missed a couple spots, the rest of it is is there's nothing. So it does work. Um, but what you want to do is just get is you can, I don't pretty sure that it comes in something else other than Liquitex, but um, that's just what happened to be available when I was at Michael's. Um, so. What you want to do is get yourself, um, hold on a second. Now for the sponge, I had to get one of my little old dollar store storage things that was, you know, wide enough and flat enough for me to put my sponge into. This one, it doesn't matter. Now this, that's probably about how much I'll need. I may need a little more, a little less, but... Um, this stuff, Liquitex can be a little pricey. Um, so if you want to try something else from another brand, but just make sure it says clear gesso, okay? Because if you get the regular gesso, then you're going to end up with a big white. And I mean, if that's doesn't bother you, but I do the clear gesso because when I'm doing that and I'm painting over, it doesn't affect the color so much but yeah make sure you don't miss <sighs> oh my gosh that's so annoying I mean I don't know anyway so I just take my sponge or brush whichever and you only you want to saturate your brush and actually this container uh, I think it had dressing in it or something. I don't know. It was from a, a fast food place. And you want to just thoroughly go over it. And you, you might not see it right off, but you'll feel it. When it starts to dry, you'll feel it. And I went over it with my hands when it was dry. Um, and I thought I had covered everything. But apparently not. So, um, and be careful how much you add. You want to add enough to cover it thoroughly, but not if you keep going back over it too many times, um, you're going to rub it off. So, um, you want to make sure that it's covered, um, and, and fully, fully covered, but you don't want to like layer it on so, so thick that, um, that it affects the lay down of your wet media. You know, you, you want it covered, but not like a super thick layer. You just, just enough, just enough to cover it completely. And you see, I'm trying, I did, I'm not worried about the round, the edge here, because I'm probably going to put tape over that anyway, but I want to put the tape on after I do the edges so that way when I go to pull the tape up it will pull up at the gesso first and not the paper there's another little tip so um, when you put down this gesso if you're gonna use wet media for the back of it which is what this is for do the gesso first and then put your tape and hopefully this has been my previous experience that it will pull at the gesso first before it hits your paper. Now another tip that you can do is use a small blow dryer um, to ease the tape off. Like I'll show you. I have this. Best little blow dryer ever. It, it's it's like one of those travel ones. This thing is powerful. Like it is very powerful. <laughs> um, and I just keep it hung on a hook near my desk. Now this top part, it does, it has worked it a little and you want to make sure that you can see where that it's kind of, um, not even when I, there was like a spot where it was kind of, um, not level. Like it was, uh, 
I don't know how the word streaked, I guess. Um, you want to make sure that you even out those spaces. And the one way to do that is just to sort of tilt it in the light so that you can kind of see how the coverage is. You just kind of move it around like I'm doing, and I can tell where the spots are that need to be leveled out. But you don't want to do it too much because that's probably how that those little spots on the other side of that paper happened because I either missed it or I went over it too many times and took it off. So you just want to level it out before it dries. That's what I'm doing right now. And you can tell this looks pretty, that looks pretty good. And you won't really be able to tell it's fully covered until it's dry. Is this, it's getting there so that's that's the bad thing you've got to wait till it's dry um but the coverage looks fairly even and you'll see a shine on the paper that's one of the ways you know that you've gotten it all cut you'll see a shine on the paper and on the other side you might see some dimpling a little bit but that's okay don't worry about it um there is a hack for that, but that's for another video. Um, if you want me to, to show you about that, I can. Um, there's a little hack that I have for that um, that I learned from other streamers and YouTube artists. I'm trying not to get on the... Um, See, and I did a little bit. I'm trying not to get on those parts because I'm not going to probably use wet media on those. So I don't really want to get, I don't want to get on those spots too much. This may be where you need to pull out your smaller brush. <laughs> so if that happens and you get some, um, just take uh, like a, if you have like a battery operated eraser. And just go over it with that. Um, the reason why I'm using this flat side actually is because it's easier to get a nice level um, coverage rather than using a brush like this. Um, this kind of gives you a nice flat coverage. So let's take this up and just kind of let's see there's a streak right there. You, you'll see that shine and you'll see if you don't see that shine in a certain area that means you missed and right here that's okay because I don't want it there anyway but I will have to be careful when I'm doing um, my wet media background um, I will have to be careful of that spot I may I may go over it with a tiny brush just to get in that detail right around it because I don't want any bleed through to the other page. Although I have several copies of this book, so it's really not a big deal. But let me just do this out a little more. So can you see, I hopefully you can see the shine. Um, I don't know if you can or not, but. And that's why I'm sort of tilting it around. What is that? It looks pretty good. Now the top part should be dry, so I'm going to run my fingers. But not too much because you don't want to rub it off. Which is, I think, maybe what, uh, what happened. Like I said earlier, it, that may be what happened. So, mm -hmm. I feel so I have done a little more of this now I'm gonna pull up my thing to check for um, shine and I can tell that I layered it really funny right here there's a spot that I don't really like I think I layered it either too thick or so I'm taking my slightly wet brush and just kind of going over it a little bit just to sort of smooth it out that is one of the keys and tricks to doing this 
is you really have to make sure you have a smooth, even coverage. It's super important for reasons which I have showed you earlier, but also because when you go to lay down the whatever wet media you're using, you you want it to kind of, unless you want it to be, wow, unless you want it to be different, or, um, then, you know, you want it nice and smooth and even, so that way, you know, it's not like, darker in one spot and lighter in another because that's basically what can happen when you don't layer it evenly like one of the things i'll show you that happened was up here this spot right here i didn't layer it evenly uh it was not a good lay down in this spot and I'm not, you know, I'm not a perfect, perf, you know, I'm not perfect. And I, you know, I obviously missed a couple spots, but I got it some here and lighter up here. So it, I didn't check it well enough when I was, you know, looking at it. So I ended up having to go back over it a little bit um, and then recolor it. And as you can see, it did not bleed through. See? So it works. But, um, if you're going to use pencil on a certain area, I wouldn't make sure there's no gesso on it, uh, no, no, this clear gesso, because it can sort of make the pencils lay down weird. So you really want to, you know, get like a, I don't know, if you're like me and you have totally poor eyes, just kind of go like that with your little magnifying glass or, you know, hold it up and just tilt it around and check for to see how it's laid down if it's nice and even and then the top should be dry so I'm gently checking it and it it feels pretty good um, I don't feel too much gesso or I don't want it except for right here which I've got to fix now. So, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, it. It's something you kind of have to take your time with. You know, it's you're going to be tempted to just rush. Don't. Because this is kind of like, it's kind of like putting a base layer to something. You know, it, that's essentially what you're doing. Is you, you're sort of putting a, a barrier between your between the paper and the wet medias and it it really does work but it is super important to take your time with it and make sure that it's done nice and smooth and even in um, a good solid coat um, and sometimes I will go back over it a couple of times uh, but as you can tell here, I'm just kind of stopping and I'm slowing things down a lot because I want to make sure that I, I get it where I want it and I get it nice and even. Now what I'm going to do is when I'm done getting like the general large area, I'm going to go in with a small brush, smaller than these two that I showed you earlier, um, and kind of get the little detailed areas around it because I don't want any of the wet media um, bleeding through. So, and if you don't care about the other side, then, you know, I wouldn't bother with this at all. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it, but if you want to preserve the other side to where it doesn't have a bunch of bleed through paint, um, this is really a smart thing to do. And as you can see, I'm just slowing down and taking my time. And I'm holding it up. Oh. <sighs> And 
and as it as it dries that shine will fade so you want to pick it up and look at it but you'll also notice a, a certain grittiness that, that that's how you kind of know it's covered and and um dry you'll feel a certain grittiness try not to rub that too hard because i think it it may rub my my thoughts are that it may rub the gesso off a little bit if you're too harsh with your rubbing so i'm gonna do the rest of this um the big layer and i'll show you how i do this the areas right around it with the small brush okay so i've gotten the larger areas <coughs> um but just take, I don't recommend using a watercolor brush, by the way. Just like a multi-purpose type brush will do, uh, or a color brush. You want something, you want something with a somewhat stiff bristle, but not like super stiff. That's why I say multi-purpose. Um, sorry, that was a little loud. Anyway, um, so... Basically, uh, I just kind of go in with a smaller brush. And you want to be careful not to leave globs like I did up there a little bit. And I can tell and I'm pro it may affect how the, the paint lays down. You can get a light, fine sandpaper and lightly go over it. Um, That would work some. Uh, I wouldn't, although I would be very careful with that. But when you're doing this sort of thing, you really want to be careful and mindful to not leave a bunch of globs. And with this kind of a brush, it's easier to leave a glob than it is the flat one. That's why I'm just kind of picking at it because I'm making sure that the it's not a nice even lay down. Like, I, I can't stress how important that is uh, <clears throat> because it, if it's not smooth and even, you're going to end up with what happened, what I showed you earlier. Or it's going to end up looking like darker in one spot and lighter than the other. It's going to lay down different on the paper and you're going to see it when you apply the color. And you're going to go get mad. <clears throat> Trust me, like me. Excuse me, my throat is just, ugh, allergies. It's a time of year. Anyway. So, that's why I'm picking at this a little bit, because I'm trying to make sure that it's a nice, smooth, even lay down. But you can't pick at it too long. If you pick at it after it's dry, you could end up with problems. So, I don't know if you can see, but... That's pretty, that's pretty good. I can tell where the shine is. I can see where it, like the grittiness is and where it isn't. Um, now for some area like this, I may have to use an even smaller brush right in there. But this is for kind of some of the smaller areas, but not as small as that. And also when you're using this stuff, make sure that you rinse your brushes out good. Um... You don't want to leave any of this uh, clear gesso residue on your brush. Uh, if you go to use your brush again uh, and it's not rinsed out, you, you know, it could mess things up for you. So I highly recommend something called pink soap. Um, Michaels has it. For sure, Amazon has it. Um, and it's a very gentle soap made for... Uh, artist brushes it's super gentle and um, it's good stuff it, it helps you and I, I used to use dish soap and I couldn't figure out why I was going through my brushes so fast even though I was cleaning them and dish soap will do in an emergency don't get me wrong in an emergency it will do but it's not ideal you know, uh, really, this pink stuff is specially formulated for brushes. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's how they make it. 
I don't know like the details. I just know that like it's extra gentle. It's even more gentle than Dawn. It's like extra, extra gentle. And this is kind of thick, but that's okay. Um, just as long as it's the same thickness everywhere. You know, because down here I'm probably going to have some sort of beach type area. So it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to show up as much as it will on the ocean area. Which is what I'm leaning toward at the moment. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of how you do it. And I'm going to go ahead and go over the lines. I don't care. Honestly, these little lines don't matter. Because I'm probably going to go over it with a pen or uh, something like that. And you can do that. Um, and it will protect the other side from bleeding. However, using pen over gesso can be a little tricky. So I'm on checking this for lay down. So you just kind of have to tilt it around and you'll see you can just kind of you you learn to eyeball where you can tell where it is and where it isn't you just you i don't know you just learn to eyeball it um is the best way and also just gently touching it but not too much and this and if there's an area where you don't feel that grittiness then you may have missed it or rubbed it off or whatever and you kind of want to Go back to that. Let's see. That looks pretty good. I don't see anything that causes me concern. So I'm going to move down to here. And by the way, I tell you, I know this looks crappy, but honestly, it's just, look, it's the back of a calendar <laughs> that I just cut out. <laughs> You know, I'm all, I try to upcycle as much as I can. Um, you know what I mean? I, I do my best. Uh, if I feel like I can, up, you know, repurpose something, uh, I try to. I figure there's enough waste in the landfills as it is. That looks pretty good. See, I don't know. Well, I hope you can. You can see the little shine. That's pretty even. It's thick, but it's it's evenly thick everywhere. Now that I don't know what's going on there. Um, it might have been something already on the paper, but it's not a problem because it's gonna get uh, it's gonna get covered up anyway. So that's kind of how you do that. Um, now. One tip is to not let this set on your brushes too long because it can make your brushes get hard and sticky. So you want to rinse them, fair, not right away, you don't have to do it like right away, but I wouldn't leave them on more than say 15-20 minutes before you rinse them out. Now, getting the smaller areas can be a little trickier. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull out some of my multi-purpose brushes. These are actually really nice brushes, um, these black ones. Freaking, they're like, I don't know, Artist Loft, not Artist Loft. Um, I don't know where I got them. They were just a cheap, bulk, generic set. Um, okay. I'm looking for... Huh. A small... Wow, well that was a bomb. All right, that didn't work. Let's try this again. Huh, yeah, let's try this one. This is the artist loft. I'm looking for a, a fairly thin pointed brush. And I'm not finding it. <laughs> uh, Alrighty then. Hold on. Oh, it's gonna be one of those days. It really is. 
Oh, here we go. Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. All right. Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. I was in the wrong container. All right. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Oh, by the way, these were... We talk about ice cycling. My husband brought these home from work. And I don't remember what he said they had in them, but he brought me home several of them. And that's what I put my paintbrushes in to keep them fairly decent. Cool, right? <laughs> now, back to this gesso. It will dry. As you can see, it's gotten a little thicker since I've poured it out. Um, so you want to just kind of be mindful of that. Um, this gesso runs about <sighs> between 15 and 20 dollars. It is a little pricey, but it's worth it. I mean, there's just so many ways. It's for it's, it says acrylic medium, but what it does is it adds tooth, it's a primer surface material. Um, but unlike regular gesso, it does not affect the color unless you don't apply it evenly. Now, typically, like I said, it says for acrylic, but um, I use it for acrylic or watercolor or whatever. Now, with my Inktense, especially, let's see, let's go down here. Um, it's really nice when I'm doing my Inktense because... Um, it grabs the gesso when I'm activating the ink tents, I'll typically apply the ink tents with my pencil or my block and then activate it on the paper. Um, I tried at doing the re reverse and, um, it didn't really work out too good. So, but what it does is it grabs that gesso when you're activating it and it sort of mixes the ink tents in with the gesso. Uh, and it creates a really nice, uh, barrier between your paper and the other side. Now you will get some wrinkling, but, um, as I said earlier, but, you know, it, if you want me to show you the little hack that I did for that, um, Pop it in the comments and I'll let you, uh, I'll do a short little video on it. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty handy. Oh, geez. Sorry about the sirens. Um, now the little item that I used for it is not the most sophisticated version of said item to do it with. Um, but, you know, it was like $10 on Amazon. So it's, you know, the cheap Chinese type. And that's why I'm, speaking of brushes and stuff, this is why I'm using this type. Because I'm getting into the, the little areas right around, um, the areas of where I, don't want the gesso. Normally I would just go over all of it like I did that other image because um, I'm using an intense base for most of it. But for this, I, I don't want all of it. So, it, you know, it takes a little more time. And so you just kind of have to have a little, little bit of care. And if you get a little bit on your mouse, um, Again, I just go in with my battery operated eraser and I just erase it. Let's see, I'll show you. And this has, this thing uh, will take off the gesso once I'm done. I, you have to let it dry. Let the gesso dry. Even if you've got it into an area you don't want, just let it dry. And if you want, you could take, this version comes with two of them. It's like F by F mat. And it comes with a big one that can go in this, this one. I think it's this one. Um, and then it also comes with this extension, which can, oops, and it's not hiding on me. Oh, and it needs to be replaced. All right. And you just pop it in like that and you can get some really tiny details areas so 
there's that. Um, it was like, I don't know, $10, $12 on Amazon. <laughs> I love Amazon. I don't know about you, but now I'm going to get this up, kind of check. And sometimes if there's stuff on the paper like that, it will show. Um, but don't worry about it. You're going to cover it up anyway. Um, and again, this works for primarily for acrylic, but it can work for watercolor, but the, in ink tins, but like I said, you have to be careful. Like here, where I did not apply it evenly, and it, it colored, it laid down darker here than like up here. So I had to sort of reapply it, and I knew that I had missed entirely here because you see how light it is? And I added several layers, which is why it bled through. Um, then it did like say here. And you don't want to go over it too many times with your ink tents or your watercolor because it will pick up the gesso and the gesso will be grabbed by the brush and picked up and eventually you won't have any gesso on the paper. So you do need to go gently with your whatever it is, you know, whatever medium you're using. Uh you know, whether it be paint or watercolor, you really want to go uh, gently because it will grab that gesso up off the paper. Um, and especially with ink tents, it's not a bad thing because it kind of blends back in and it becomes permanent with the paper. So that's not a bad thing. But if you're using like acrylic or watercolor, then it's going to look really super weird. Um, and you can sometimes fix that with what well, you know with um, colored pencils and you know things like that um but that's why i'm taking so much time with this one because i want to be careful that i get the best lay down that i can so that when i start in with the background i have a good base from which to work And you want to make sure that your brush is coated fairly evenly. I mean, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a nice even coating of the uh, gesso. Yeah. And this, this tiny little brush helps you kind of get into the corners and the crevices. Um, unless, of course, you just want to go all over it and then you can just you know grab this and aside from a few small areas um let me check this make sure it's good except for a few small areas uh, you know you should be good to go but uh that's kind of what i do this is kind of what i do to kind of prep my surface when i know that i'm going to use a lot of wet medium and honestly, pan, you could use pan pastels. I would not recommend pas, pan pastels with a um, gessoed background. But if you're just wanting to do a background without prepping it like this, you know, you could just do like a uh, pan pastel. Or um, gelatos don't really um, grab at the paper as much. I'm just doing a loose here to just kind of make sure that it's nice and blended in. I'm not pushing too hard and I'm not picking up any more gesso. I'm just trying to blend it in with this area so that it's kind of nice and smooth. And you just kind of check and see right there. I kind of, I missed a spot. It's not, so I'm kind of smoothing that out. Ta-da! It's looking pretty good so far. You really do need to take your time with this sort of thing. Um, it's really super important that you take your time. Um, I haven't at times and it you know you end up with problems and they're usually fixable but not always like I did a picture once and I got sloppy with my work and my prep work and the back of the page ended up like totally destroyed it, it, it bled through so much because I was so sloppy um, with my prep work, sorry, I got to turn it, that the other side of the image was really ruined. So, 
So let's pick it up and kind of tilt it. Uh, and look for the look how the shine lays down, and then that'll show you where the gesso is and where it isn't. And I can tell right here I did not get up to the edge of the balloon or right up to the edge of the sign. It's not shiny, and I don't see a change, slight change in the color, like in the in the um, consistency of the paper. Now, if you want to use this for a book, like say you have a, um, I'm going to, sorry for turning it, but I'm going to, I'm trying to show you as best I can. Um, how I fix things like that very carefully. If you want to take a book that is say the paper is a little, eh, like, I'll show you one of my cute coloring books. I love this book so much. Like, say you have a book. Let's put this aside for a second. Let some of that dry. And be mindful about your brushes, too. It's I'm about to the point where I'm going to have to rinse those because it's been a, a few minutes. Say you have a brush. Uh, not a brush. Blech. You have a book like this. I love this book. Just FYI. Absolutely adorable. Adorable. There's two images in each book. Absolutely adorable. Um, I love this book. It's so freaking cute. <laughs> Isn't that adorable, y'all? I just love it. Anyway, so the paper is kind of, it's kind of Amazon paper-ish. So you can take your, your, your clear gesso and run a layer of gesso. I wouldn't do a heavy layer. I would do a, a modest a light to medium layer because the paper won't take any more than that. But you layer down that gesso and you won't have to um, scan and copy the paper page like I do. That's what I do with typically with coloring books like this is I will take it out and these are perforated so which is really great. Um, and it's by some Japanese person. K-A-Y-O-M-I. I can't pronounce it. Kaomi? Kaomi? Maybe? Um, anyway, on Amazon, it's on Amazon. Uh, teacup kitties. So, um, but you just layer it over there and, you know, that should let it dry. You should be able to, to do a little more with it. Um, I guess that for me, I typically will tear it out if it's perforated or I will cut it out with a craft knife yeah, like on my new Kirby book <laughs> and um, and take it out that way which is what I did with this I took a craft knife and just cut it out um, I have a printer that has a scanner now the bad one, with, bad part with these though is that because they're ten by ten, um, my printer doesn't quite. Some of the if the images go all the way to the edge, um, I don't always get all of the images like the, the one with the trees. It's gonna cut some of it off this way. Um, you know I can't. The printers kind of only don't come any bigger than what I have, so. You know, it just is what it is. <laughs> but now let's go back to checking this. Um, it looks pretty good. I don't see, it looks like it's right up to the edge and you just, you know, kind of feel, kind of eyeball it. And it looks like it's, it's, and it feels like it's up to the edge. Not quite here. So you want to, dip it in but you don't want to use too much because you're just doing a touch up and let's see just kind of eyeball it you know that's why i keep turning it and you just kind of do, do, do. Yeah, hold your breath if you have to sometimes if you you have a wobbly hand like me when you go to lay it down hold your breath I, i'm serious just Kind of hold your breath. You'll find that your hand is steadier. I learned that when I was trying to take pictures with my phone. Hold, 
when I held my breath, my hand was a little steadier. So just kind of hold your breath for a second or two and your hand will get steadier, I promise. So now that you see that this is drying, you can see the bristles are starting to separate a little bit. So right, like right here, it's starting to separate. So I need to rinse these. So that is kind of that. I will do a do the background for this and I may or may not post it with the video. We'll see. But that's pretty much how you how you do it. And it's it's not hard, but you really do need to be careful and thorough and just, you know, pay attention to detail. And I promise you, it makes all the difference in the world. If you really want to save the other side of your image, this is a huge, huge thing. Just take your time, do it right, especially when you don't want to do the whole entire picture with and you just want to do one spot, it will salvage most of the other side of your image. Unless, of course, you miss. <laughs> All right, peeps. I'm out. Stay safe. Bye. Okay, so I am back. I had not planned on doing a follow-up with this, but... I could not believe this actually worked even better than I thought it would. Um, yeah, so I used all kinds of gouache, watercolor. I'm not 100% done with it. I mean, I still got to, you know, touch up the the water, uh, the water part of it, which is this part. Um, I probably will use, like, some really soft color pencils like my Holbein's or something like that. Um, but the basic water part of it, um, paper cannot take any more. It, it just, even with the, um, the clear gesso, it's, it's had all it can take. Um, and I almost wrecked it right here because it just kept taking it off to the, to the paper. And I knew that I was going to run into trouble if I didn't stop. So... Um, yeah, I know this is, I love this color. I actually custom mixed this color myself with a mix of gouache, watercolor, and acrylic. Um, I think I still have the, um, oh, and there's also some, uh, shimmery kind of, uh, metallic stuff mixed in from a... Chinese watercolor set that I also did a tutorial, a review on, excuse me. Um, so look for that. Um, I used some of their shimmering sets in, for that. And I used um, these gouaches, doo -doo -doo, um, which are from Arteza. Very nice stuff. And, um, and then this was the one acrylic that I used. It's just like generic artist love. And same here. Um, or is this? Oh, no. Actually, this was from Five Below, which is like a discount store. Um, and then these are the artist love. Um, and these are actually watercolors. So, it's a little mix. Um, but... I custom mixed it and then I put it into this, which is something, it, it, it's amazing. It will keep it from drying out. It's, it's amazing. Just trust me. Anyway, so yeah, but moment of the truth I pulled the tape off using my handy dandy little blow dryer and, and as you can see it did leak out from under the tape somewhat right right been here where I was really going at it with the watercolor um, you know it that's bound to happen you can see down here it's a lot cleaner um, even with the blow dryer uh, I didn't you I only went over this maybe a couple of times but look at the back side what I'm talking about now it's dimpled it, but it did not bleed through at all in one single spot there's not one single area of bleed through not one and 
I used repeated, repeated layers of my watercolor mix. I mean, uh, some ink tints for the clouds. I mean, repeated layers. I gotta touch that up a little bit, but you know, I knew when to stop though. And I could tell that even with this, if I kept going, it was gonna go through. You, you gotta, that's the, one of the key things is you gotta know when to stop. And so I'll let this dry overnight and I'll go at it with some really soft, either pan pastels or some really soft um, colored pencils, something of that sort to kind of finish it out because I, you know, the paper was just, had all it could take. And I am shocked that it, I expected a few areas maybe but this is what I was saying earlier about taking your time and doing it right and not rushing it because I took my time and I was careful and thorough in my lay down of the clear gesso I mean, you saw I used about three or four different kinds of brushes to get in all the little cracks and crevices around the areas that where I wasn't going to use wet media um, because I was so thorough. Um, I have no no bleed through issues with Zebra right now. Some some did I did mess up a little on a couple spots, but I mean, it was not significant enough to bleed through it. And I, I did not expect to not have anything. I expected to maybe have one or two spots. Cause I, I mean, I went at it with the wet media and I mean, at least seven or eight layers, at least. Now, if you had done this without the clear gesso, it would not look like this. I promise you, even with, her the paper that is decent in, in her newer coloring books like her older ones not so much like secret garden i wouldn't use wet media in that book at all um it the paper's just different you know um this paper is more suitable to wet media but even so if i had not used that clear gesso it would not that other side would not look like that so this wrinkling is easily fixed I mean, easily fixed. You know, it's, the, it's it, you basically you can iron it out. I haven't done a video about that, but I'm planning. It's in the works. Um, it's so easily fixed. This is unbelievable. I it is a resounding success. I did not expect to see nothing at all. That's crazy. Um, so. Yeah, guys, I'm telling you, get yourself some clear gesso and just take your time with it. Lay it down carefully. Hold it up to the, your light and just kind of check for, you know, check the shine it, to see if you've laid it down nice and even. If you see any little spots where it's not nice and smooth, just, you know, do like I showed you and take your time with it. And that is what will happen. So, yeah. Wow. I have definitely proved my point and then some. So I hope you guys uh, learn, find this useful. Um, it was better than even my past uh, times of working with it. Uh, this was by far the best success that I've had with it. And again, it's because I took more time with it and I've learned from my mistakes with it. And, you know, first starting to use it, um, I, that's the best advice I could give you is to start out with either the sponge or flat brush that's got some texture, but not too, you know, some stiffness, but not super stiff. You want like a multi-purpose brush. Um, and then, you know, do like I showed you and do the, the small 
brush is for the finer areas and just you know you got to hold it up and check it out and you know and just touch it up and touch it up until it's perfect and if you take your time and do it like that that's what you get oh, I could not believe it but I know when to stop <laughs> and I'm stopping so yeah I will probably once I'm done with this whole image which it is a color long in um, the Johanna gesture pages I think that's the Johanna Bashford coloring group that I belong to it's pretty 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 famous just look it up on Facebook um there's like thousands of members um this is the color long for this month so I decided why not yeah yeah, anyway, try it, guys. I'm, I promise you, uh, I don't have the ability to, to do live links, uh, uh, you know, that will actually go from, like, my site to my channel to Amazon. I just, I'm not an affiliate member yet. Um, I don't have enough members yet. So click that like and subscribe, guys. And when I hit the number that I need to hit, then I can do the affiliation thing. So, but for right now, I cannot. But I will pop it in the description uh, of the name of it again and try to give you some idea of the paints that I used if that's what you want to do. Um, and uh, do you guys have a great one. Stay safe and happy coloring and painting. Bye.